What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hamlin, aka The Laptop Legend, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the breaking news that was just released on the TSNPD, or soon to be HMBL, Humble Inc. investor call that just happened today after the close of the stock market, like literally as soon as the stock market closed. And uh, George Sharp was tweeting about this, so you know, there, there was a little bit of a run up at the end of the day, as expected, because people wanted to get in before whatever breaking news came out. Well. I would say this is pretty good news. So the crazy news that was announced was that Humble Inc. has acquired Tickery, which is a ticketing company. And if you don't understand why that's a big deal, I'm gonna explain it to you because honestly, it really is a big deal. All right guys, so I'm here at my computer just so you guys can see a little bit better. I took some screenshots from the presentation so you guys can get more of a visual of what they were talking about. So this is Tickery, this is how it's spelled, this is what it looks like, and again, this is their latest acquisition. And he said that they acquired this, I believe for $20 million in cash and stock options. Um, and I mean, th that seems like a pretty good deal for, for the type of footprint that this company has. So if I continue on down here, you can see that uh, Tickery, they currently have, they're associated and, and they're contracted with 5,000 plus venues, and you can see they are in 45 plus states. These are just some of the areas where Tickery already has ties. And uh, man, th I feel like that's a pretty decent acquisition. And he says this is their crown jewel acquisition to uh, to quote him verbatim with huge upside because there's a hundred billion dollars a year opportunity in the ticketing market. And he he was talking about the fact that he thinks he thinks there's one major big player and then kind of a gap. And there's there's not really anyone who's taken over that second place spot. And uh, he really feels like humble with this merger can potentially take over that area. And uh, I mean, you might not see the vision, but I feel like this is this goes along perfectly with everything that Humble has stood for, if that makes sense, because uh, they've always been all about convenience and turning everything digital in terms of payments. And this just perfectly adds on to that. And he specifically talked about all of the, the specific verticals where this will be able to be used. He talked about concerts, events, festivals, arenas, sports, casinos, and all those things he believes are going contactless in the near future just because of the nature of the new global world we live in, man. The, the new world we live in. Uh, you know, COVID changed everything and everything is probably going to be going contactless in the future, especially as we go more and more digital and, uh, you know, people are more and more conscious of, of these health concerns. But it's pretty cool, I mean, just to see the footprint, the massive footprint that Tickery has. So if we continue, uh, this is what their website currently looks like, and they are huge in Latin America. They've worked with some of the biggest names out there. Uh, I mean, here's just an example. They have a ton of these. I mean, Bad Bunny, bro? That man is fire. Brr, el Conejo Malo. They got J Balvin, El Alfa. Uh, I'm not sure who these are. Teo Calderon, Gente de Zona. Bro, I mean, they got a lot. They got a lot of really, really cool artists that they've already worked with. I mean, the fact, Bad Bunny, bro, this man, this man charges a million dollars for a concert. He says that in one of his songs. Un millón por cho? I mean, that's crazy, bro. If Humble gets a little slice of that, I smell some revenues in the future. Some serious revenues. And uh, the fact that they have so, so many, it feels like a, like roots. They have roots all over the place. And this is going to be a, a big revenue maker, especially as things start to open back up and uh, you know, people get more immunity, these vaccines start to come into effect more, so I think this is gonna be really, really good for the company, and I'm, I'm excited about this acquisition, honestly, I, I think it's pretty cool. And uh, th th those are some of the artists. Now, talking about some of Tickery's already existing, uh, what is the word for it exactly? Already existing, I can't think of the word, uh, sponsorships, yeah, so they have instant sponsorships and revenue from all of these companies, all these companies, and there's some big ones in here, like Boost Mobile, I already knew about them, Heineken, like these are these are pretty big brands, you know these these are these are pretty big brands, and the fact that you know they're just adding all that on, and now they have these revenues is cool. And what I'm most excited to see is what types of revenues are coming from this. And we're supposed to get those audited financials in quarter two, so I'm excited to see. And uh, I think it's going to scale up vastly because I have a friend, shout out Aya, she uh, works in like the, the, the concert industry. And right now everything has just been shut down because of COVID. You know, all these artists are not doing these concerts and the demand is starting to build back up. You know, we're starting to see people in NBA games. We're starting to see people in NFL games, like see them in the stands again, see people at UFC fights. So these types of things, the ticketing events, it's going to start picking back up and them having this acquisition is going to be 
really good. I mean, they, they couldn't have had a better time to get in. It's like buying on the dip, you know, buying a, a ticketing event, a, a ticketing company when, when the world demand is starting to do this again. I feel like it's really smart. And uh, he talked about the fact that he imagines like contactlessness is going to be everywhere. And he, he thinks humble app is going to be the main thing for that. You know, using the, the, the QR codes to, to, to get your ticket and go in, that can be built into the humble app. I mean, we've already had apps for that and it's super nice. I've gone to concerts with a QR code, but imagine if you could pay for all your food and order directly within the stadium doing that as well. Or you could order, you know, a Jersey, you could order merch for the, for the, for the artists, stuff like that. Just pretty cool. So his vision that he has for this, he thinks the world is going contactless, you know, everything, museums, concerts, everything, sporting events, all that stuff he sees is going contactless. And he thinks that it would make more sense for, uh, everything to use one app instead of just every single event building their own app. You know, like imagine your, your hometown museum has to build an app to go contact us. I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but if there's one big player, it could, it could ease a lot of those, I guess, tensions and just make, make everything a lot easier. So that's his vision for it. And uh, honestly, I'm pretty excited by it. Here's just another example of, uh, you know, some of the things that we could be seeing in the future. And he, yeah, here are the planned verticals again. So concerts, events, festivals, like all that stuff, you know, it, where people are going in and, and buying, buying beers or buying food or, or buying random stuff, buying their tickets, all that stuff. I mean, it can all go under the Humble app, which is pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. In Latin America, I mean, those soccer games, football games, I mean, they get... Those things are packed, bro. I don't know if you've ever ever seen some of those in the World Cup. I mean, every single one of those seats is completely filled. So whew, it could be pretty cool, man. I could see a lot of revenue coming from this. And uh, that's what this company needs. I think that that's the most important thing at this point, you know, getting that revenue up to where the valuation is. And I think it's, it's going to be really cool to see moving forward. Now, here's the company roadmap that you can see. And uh, this is kind of what they expect to do in each of their different segments of the business by each point in the quarter. And so in terms of the application, he said previously, uh, back on the December call, their goal was to get it launched, the app, by quarter two. But uh, he said it's already uploaded to the app store. It's not published yet because there's still some regulatory things that they're working on. But his goal is to get the app out there by the end of quarter one. He's not going to force it if it can't happen, obviously, but it's, it's either going to be quarter one late quarter one or, or probably early quarter two. So that's very exciting to have this app, you know, finally being out there. And uh, you can just take a look at, look at through all this. I'm not going to go through every single one for you, but you know, if you want to pause the video and, and take a second to read this, pretty cool uh, what they have going on. And then, you know, lastly here, we see their strategic roadmap. And he's talked about the fact that they, they've delivered on everything that they said they were going to do, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool, honestly. Um, so I mean, you can see in here, they got the acquisition. We got audited company financials again, coming quarter two. So that is really what I'm looking for. I am really looking forward to seeing what is going to happen with that. Um, we got the shareholder conference at the end. They're working on all these partners. There's a lot of really good things in the future for this company. Um, and I'm excited to see what happens. Now, in terms of the reverse split, again, typically that's not a good thing. Uh, but I think in this case, it might, it might work out to be okay uh, just based on all the things that the company has going for it. So, you know, again, in my history, trading stocks, Reverse splits have never been a good thing, but I think this may be an exception. So uh, we'll see what happens, obviously, with the company, but I'm excited for the future. There were a couple other cool things I just want to throw out there. So he said uh, he said that their ETX, so again, like an ETF, but for crypto, again, it's, it's not allowed in the U.S. right now, but they had 15,000 people try to sign up from within the U.S. So that, that's a pretty big number. That's a pretty wild figure. And uh, they say that they're, they're doing their best to partner with regulatory, legal, and compliance to create that opportunity for people in the U.S. so that they can take advantage of it with one click. Because obviously, if 15,000 people try to sign up, there's a pretty big demand for that, I would say. Um, and again, yeah, no hard date for the app launch yet, but he's trying to get it out in late quarter one or early quarter two, if possible. Uh, and then he also said that they, they've been selling six figures in merchandise for Humble every single month, which is crazy. Which is crazy. Six figures a month in Humble merchandise. I mean, shout out to my Dan, my man Dan. I know I know you got some of that merch. I don't know who else is buying it. I haven't really seen it, seen a ton of it around, but I guess someone's buying it if they're selling six figures a month. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the update, guys. I think it's pretty exciting. I think we're gonna, gonna see some nice movements in the, in the stock price continuing. I love the volatility. And uh, there's a lot of opportunities here, a lot of opportunity for long-term growth as well. So super excited. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, hope everyone had a great February. 
let's see what the market brings in, in March and uh, stay, stay humble, stay hungry, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, let's grow better together.